Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to show you quickly how to harmonise a melody which means we need to discuss chords. Now I think most of us know that to make a chord, a triad, we need to play a note, miss a note, play a note, miss a note and play a note. So to find the notes of a C major chord we play C, we miss out D, we play E, we miss out F and we play G so we get the note C, E, G. And that's the case for all triads consonant triads that is. So for example if I want to find the chords in C major I'm just going to write out chord 1, chord 2, chord 3, chord 4, chord 5, chord 6 and chord 7 in Roman numerals like that. Okay then I'm going to add the scale of C major above it so C, D, E, F, G, A, B, just like that. Okay, so that's given me the chord uh, that would be chord one in C major. The chord would be D in in uh, C major. Chord two, chord three would be E. Chord four would be F. Chord five would be G. Chord six would be A, and chord seven would be B. Now, if I want the third of the chord, I either played one, missed out D, played E. I'm going to start by writing E there, and then go E F G. A, B, C, D, which will give me all the thirds of the chords. Can you see how this is creating a chord now? If I do the same and I miss out the F and I put the G in, and then write the scale of C major, but from G, starting on G, G, A, B, C, D, E and F, I end up with all the notes in a chord of C major, all the notes in a chord of D, E, F, G, A and B. Now, some of you will have already recognised that some of these chords would be major chords and some would be minor. Now, that's another thing entirely. We'll talk about intervals later on in the term to discover why these are major and minor. But, for argument's sake now, we notice that chord 2 is a minor chord, chord 3 is a minor chord and chord 6 is a minor chord, leaving chord 1, 4 and 5, which are major, and chord 7, which is what we call a diminished chord. It's got a very distinct sound to it. But for now, I just want you to see the chord 1, 4 and 5 are in capital Roman numerals because they're major and 2, 3, 6 are a lowercase because they're minor and chord 7 is also a minor type chord so it's in lowercase as well. So now we've ended up with all of the notes in uh, the chords, every chord of C major. Okay, so C major's key has chord 1 which is C major, chord 2 which is D minor, chord 3 E minor chord 4, F major, chord 5, G major, chord 6, A minor and chord 7 which is diminished, B, B diminished. Okay, Now that enables us to harmonise a melody that is in C major. So I'm going to show you in a moment on Sibelius a melody uh, which you'll recognise as Happy Birthday and we're going to try using this table to be able to harmonise the melody. So if I just show you that... Let's get the brightness or to the contrast. Okay, so hopefully you can all see that melody of uh, Happy Birthday that goes G G A G C B G G A G D C and so on. It does go on, but we don't need any more than that for now. Now we're going to ignore this first beat here on its own, which is not a full bar of three four. As you can see, the time signature says three four three crotchets in a bar. This is called an anacrusis. We don't need to worry about that for now. We're going to look at this whole, first whole bar, so bar one essentially. Can you see the notes in that bar are an A, a G and a C. So let me point those out. A, G and C. Hopefully we're okay with treble clef reading. The contrast has gone again now. So A, G and C. Now what I can do is I can look back at my table and see which chord would suit that the best by looking in the majority of the notes. So we're looking for an A, a G and a C. Now if I look at my chord table and I look for a chord that's got A in it, a G and a C, well first and foremost I could have A could be chord 2, could be chord 4, can you see that, or could be chord 6. But actually in all of those chords uh, there, there's no G at all, okay? We could look at chord 4, which has an A and a C in it. Okay, fine, so it could be chord 4. But also, don't forget my G. Let's look for a chord that's got a, a G and a C in it as well, which could also be chord 1. 
Now because this piece is in C major, the likelihood is the best chord for that first bar is going to be the tonic chord, which would be chord of C major. So I'm going to go for chord one because it's got the C and the G in it, okay? And I'm going to ignore that A, I'm going to call it a passing note. So it's not as important as the C and G, so we're just going to go with chord one. So I need chord C major in my left hand of the piano. So I'm going to get Sibelius and I'm going to get the keypad down here, I hope you can see this, I don't know if you can, the contrast is very bad here, let's put it a bit closer, so I'm going to go to my keypad and I'm going to get a dotted minim, so a minim plus the dot and I'm going to bring it down to my left hand, I'm going to put a chord of C major in, so C, remember it's bass clef, all cows eat grass, E and G, okay? So I'm going to put that chord in there. Now let's look at the next bar. In the melody there's a B and a G and a G. Now if I look back at my chords, I'll notice that there are two chords that have got Bs and Gs in. The first one is called 3, which would be E minor, and the, the second one is called 5, which is G major, G, B, D. I think because chord 1, 4 and 5 are my primary chords and they're the most important chords, I think we'll go for chord 5 here and put G, B, D in chord 5. So I'm going to put a chord of G major in. So I'm going to get my G, green buses drive fast always, bass clef, G, B, D. I'm going to whack it in there. And now I've harmonised that melody with a chord of G major. And then next bar, we've got an A, a G and a D. So really, out of that bar, I think again, can you see how I think it will probably be chord 5? But just for argument's sake, let's just try uh, chord 3, just for... Uh, a bit of variation, so we're going to put an E in, E, a G and a B, and then this last chord here, I'm going to go for a chord of C major again. Now, when there are other two other options for chords, or even three sometimes, if you try one option and listen to it carefully, if you like the sound, if you think the sound sounds good, then stick with it. If you think, wait a minute, that sounds a little bit dissonant, maybe it clashes with one of the notes from the melody, then why don't you try the other chord? Um, it's all to do with the ear, really. Uh, there is no real right or wrong answer, as long as you've got that chord um, that matches up with most of those notes in the melody. Now I'm just going to press escape to get rid of that blue cursor on my notes. I'm going to press on the first note of my melody and I'm going to press P on my keyboard and hopefully that's going to play me this melody with the harmonisation, see if you like it. Now, can you hear that that E minor chord we put in in bar three doesn't sound quite correct? So let's try the other option, which was, you remember? G, B, let's go for chord five. So we're gonna just literally get the arrow, I'm gonna highlight that bar, pull it down until I get to the G chord again. There we go, same as bar two. I'm gonna have another go at playing it. Ah, there we go, that's better. So hopefully that gives you an idea of how you can complete harmonise one, harmonisation one task on um, your composition heading on the Google Classroom. So there are instructions there. The first thing it will ask you to do is to create um, a chart a little bit like this with the C major scale with the degrees, the chords down the bottom. So chord one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then write your C major scale, a third and the fifths above them to create the chords. Then go through your melody in Sibelius and look at it. It's actually called the Ash Grove, the melody, and see which are the majority notes in that bar that fit the correct chord, and then decide on that chord and put it into your left hand, remembering that it's bass clef. If you have any problems at all with this, just email me um, and I'll try to help. Okay, hope that helps you. Goodbye.